it's crazy to think that it's been over 13 months since I picked up this Nissan Z. I've waited all this time to do a review just so I can feel and understand, modify, and race this car to give you all a proper feedback for the RZ34. So in this video, I will go over how it's been when I had it stock, its reliability along the way, how the process for the tuning has gone, and how it's been modifying and as well as where I see the Nissan Z's future. For those of you that are new here, I currently own a Q50 Red Sport, which has the same engine as the Nissan Z. So I'm well versed on this platform and I've pushed this engine as hard as I could on the stock turbos. And that ended up resulting in me beating the stock turbo record at the time for the Qs and VR30s. I go to say I'm pretty experienced with this engine and I'm just not talking out loud. So first and foremost, let's lightly go over when I first initially purchased the car. My first impressions were that it seemed very familiar and that's because I've owned a 350Z which I turbocharged and I have a Q50 which ironically has the same engine as the Z. The transmission felt very, very familiar as well to the seven speed Jackal that's in the Q50, but it also felt kind of different. At times I would shift up to seventh gear forgetting that I had two extra gears. So in stock form, the Z feels close to a Q50, but just in a tighter, smaller chassis. And then the one thing I didn't really like was that the traction control intervened way too much. Launch control also wasn't all that good, but I knew with the tune, a lot of things will change. So I mentioned in one of my videos between the Q50 versus the Z, that the Z felt like it was kind of on a leash and it was an animal cage up always being tamed. With the Z being a sports car, I needed the car to feel a bit more sporty than what it offered. So the first mods I got were silver suspension coilovers and a tune by Racebox. These two mods alone completely changed the way the car feels. The car was very responsive on turns and on throttle as well. The car made 430 wheel horsepower on a tune only on 93, which made it a pretty competitive car to race against many cars on the road. So the next month I ended up installing the Pride Auto full down pipes and the car exhaust note really opened up. It was extremely throaty and you can hear the turbo spool and the car sounded pretty aggressive for downpipes only paired with the performance factory exhaust. Talking about these downpipes, I'm willing to do a giveaway completely free for those of you who like this video, subscribe, and comment what's your favorite thing about the Z. And I will select one of you guys to win a pair of full downpipes for free. You hear that? For free. You guys are gonna get some full downpipes. And don't sell them. I want you guys to install it and tag me when you install that on Instagram. Now, the next mod was the Boosted 6 Auto Intakes. With this and the full downpipes from Pride Auto, you can completely hear the turbo suck and blow. With these combinations of mods, the car felt amazing. I always told myself that this is the way the car should have came. Having just these mods on the car, it makes it a capable 10 second quarter mile car if you add a drag radio. Don't believe me? Look what I did here with a tune and tire only. It wasn't a 10 second pass, but it was nearly almost a 10 second pass by the blink of an eye. So I ended up enjoying this car for, I would say about 12 to 14,000 miles in the span of a few months. The car felt amazing on the road. It's a great daily driver and no issues this far. Tuning has been seamlessly remotely with the team at Racebox. I decided to go ahead and install flex fuel to see what this car can do on full bolt-ons. When I added the flex fuel, the high pressure fuel pump and the low pressure fuel pump, I had a change of heart. Initially, I wanted to go after you know stock turbo records and all that as bad as i wanted to test the z with other cars on stock turbos i really didn't feel the need to push it like i did with the q so i told myself i will go ahead and install aftermarket turbos by z1 motorsports 
which at this time they had just released their uh, BRX 70 turbos for the Q and not the Z. But since the engine on the Q is the same as the Z, I figured the turbos sh should work. So we went ahead and retrofitted them onto the Z. And this was all done at Temis Motorsports. Now this car was the first Z car that's not a shop car that had aftermarket turbos. The only ones that had these turbos were Z1 Motorsports and myself. At the same time, I had them custom fit a Tomei. I currently have the factory exhaust because I was doing a sound comparison with the Z1 turbos and the Pride Auto full downpipes. I'm not sure when I'm gonna release that, but yeah, I had the car over at Temis Motorsports. They did a custom Tomei and they installed my force inductions interchiller as well. So now I have a Z with upgraded turbos and I thought the first version of my car was pretty fast when it was just kind of bolt-ons with tune. I had no idea what was quick. The car now on turbos, it feels like a freaking rocket. Once it hits four and a half RPMs, it starts to pull and it pulls harder the higher you go in the RPMs. The boost just keeps on rising. I will eventually give a full review of the Z with the Z1 turbos. Just stay locked in and don't miss out on that. During this entire time, we were in a hustle to try to get this car done to make it to FL2K. If you don't know what FL2K is, it is a drag event held in Bradenton, which is similar to Texas 2K, but they have no affiliation. So before and while attending FL2K, there were some Ecutech bugs and learning curve with the vehicle. After FL2K, we ended up getting the car to run pretty good. We were also having low oil pressure issues up top, and I believe it's likely due to the banjo bolts that we're using on the turbos. These journal bearing turbos, we are replacing them with the new ball bearing turbos that Z1 offers. These ball bearing turbos are going to allow for faster spooling and should help me retain more oil pressure up top by using tighter banjo bolts. So thank you Z1 for releasing these ball bearing turbos for the VR30. These are the first and only so far bolt-on aftermarket small frame turbos. The other turbos that are on the market right now, they're hybrids, so they use the stock frame. The car right now has close to 18,000 miles. And so far I haven't had any issues with the Z. This is one of the highest mileage Zs in the world and it's already modified to the brim. I make sure to test my oil by sending it to Blackstone to do an analysis to verify that the motor is healthy. So far, no metal count has been found and no elevated potassium, which would indicate a, a coolant leak inside the engine. I don't hear any weird sounds, nothing has broken, and the car starts right up just fine. I do believe that the future is bright for the VR30 and Ecutech is already working on new features for the VR30 platform. More and more companies are jumping on the Z train to provide support to this already large community and it's only going to get bigger as cars start to roll out. As for my plans with the Z, I'm gonna continue pushing this car with the Z1 turbos and on the stock motor and stock transmission. I've already knocked out a mid five second 60 to 130 on these turbos. And I honestly believe a four second is possible with the right shift points, a little bit of weight reduction, turning up the boost and some pretty good air. If you wanna see the draggy pulls that I've already made, make sure to click here and stay locked into my channel.